Hello there, Ray here, and today guys we'll be looking at a crazy new farm for the nether update. This is an infinitely automatic huge fungi farm, which produces a wide variety of different types of blocks, all automatically. With this farm alone, you will get the majority of all 50 new items that were introduced in the nether update. If you're curious about what all the new items are, I did do a video going over all those items and how you can obtain them in survival. And if you're curious what is all going on with the nether update, I did do a review video of it as well. You can find both those links down in the description. If you guys do enjoy learning about the newest snapshots as well as discovering cool things about them, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And currently only 25% of you guys are currently subscribed. So let's see if we can get that up to 50%. And if you guys are subscribed, you guys get a new little badge down in the comments. So make sure you guys show your support by going ahead and leaving a comment showing that you are subscribed. Just like the previous farms, which I've shown in the last video, we also designed this one during the Wednesday snapshot stream. So if you'd like to join us as we design these cool machines, make sure you follow me on my other social media links, all which can be found down below. I also want to thank everybody who joined those streams. They are a ton of fun and we discovered so many cool things during that stream, some of which I'll show you guys in this video. So you can find the new fungi needed for this farms in these biomes, either the warped forest or the crimson forest. And these little fungi can be bone milled up into huge fungi or giant fungi, and they can get a wide variety of sizes. And currently these fungi don't spread, so they're kind of a limited resource. So the fungus can only be planted on dirt light blocks. So uh, this block is seemed like a dirt light, this nicelium, either variations of them. There's also a mycelium. Oh, you cannot actually plant on mycelium, but you can plant it on my podzo, coarse grass, normal dirt. Here's even the soul soil. Wow, farmland also works. Did you have to first put it down and then? Nope, I just place it off. The and you can bone mill these. It doesn't really matter what's above them. They'll just grow around whatever there is. So even though you can put the mushroom on these other blocks, it don't seem like you can actually bone mill them on those blocks. It only works if it's these type of blocks. And yeah, even those blocks above them, they don't lose. They're kind of like grass tops. Oh yeah, okay. And yeah, they pretty much can bone mill anywhere. They'll go through any blocks in the way and just put in their blocks where there's room. So they're not really picky. They kind of just take over any empty spot. So if end gateway is on top, you bone mill it. Yeah, I'll just kind of bone mill whatever I can and replace anything I can. So you can see it replaced the gateway there. So here's our testing area where we were testing out red mushrooms to see all the different types of blocks that they can replace with their mushroom blocks when grown up. And it's pretty much anything that's somewhat transparent. Let's see how much of these guys will actually destroy as well. And one of the fungi and bone millet. They can get quite a few different sizes, but wow, yeah, you can definitely see if there is any of those type of the same transparent blocks are in their way, they will replace them. So you can definitely use these to break stuff like nether portals or end portals or gateway portals. I'm sure it would break this too if it was closer to the top. We could put in some other ones. So here we grew another one and oh we got grew quite a few of them actually. But yeah pretty much destroyed all the blocks there. Pretty much all the blocks here. Anything that isn't like a full cube it ends up pretty much destroying. So keep that in mind when you're trying to grow these things up. But definitely useful for breaking like nether portals, gateway portals, end portals, end portal frames, that kind of stuff, but not bedrock. So, so Frost put the fungi on top, puzzle, but he has the Nicelium below it and actually grow. Or normally it wouldn't grow in that situation, about two below it. Oh, wow. Yeah, if you put it two below, it also works. And it actually fills up the whole thing. That's pretty crazy. So you could technically make it grow quite tall. Wait. Can we use this to, to stretch it and go over here? This here. Okay, now put a block there. Oh wow, yeah, you can stretch them really tall using that. That'd be a very nice way to make a um, fungi, a giant fungi farm. Because you can stretch them tall. First you get all the cool blocks. Oh wow. What? Wait, what just happened there? <laughs> Oh, you're bone milling the same one over and over again. Oh, that is insane. So I kind of want to see how big these guys can get. So I set up a test here where we have the nilium at the very bottom. And at the very top, we have our uh, podzel as well as our fungi. 
The red ones and blue ones should be pretty similar other than the red ones producing vines. Spam click this with a lot of bone meal and we'll watch the tree down below grow up. It's going through a lot of different variations. So every time it finds a bigger tree, then it's going to kind of add that piece onto the current one below. So the fungi just gets bigger and bigger, but each time it is actually growing and using up bone meal. So I've been bone milling this for quite a while and you can see it's starting to fill out the shape. A couple pieces haven't been filled in yet, but you can definitely see the shape of all the huge fungi put together. This is what it'll end up looking. Kind of tiered at the top and downwards it is very blocky like. This little piece never made it, a couple of pieces never made it, but I'm sure they would eventually be filled in over time. But in the center you can kind of see what happens. There is a chance that it'll produce uh, three by three ones, or ones of different variations that will eventually fill in this whole entire area. And there is stems inside of here as well as shroom lights. So I kind of want to replace all of the outside with air and then see what exactly is left, like how much of it is stem. Because it shouldn't really replace the stem, it might replace the shroom lights. I'm not sure if they're considered to be transparent, I guess we could test it. So it looks like the villager do take damage from this. So I doubt it would be replaced. Let's go ahead and fill this in. So replacing the warped blocks with air and wow, that is what's left. A lot of shroom lights. Definitely the stem is thicker towards the bottom and gets much thinner towards the top. Uh, probably just to do with which blocks get filled in first. But down here, definitely can see it can get quite wide if it wants to. That's a pretty interesting looking structure just with all the shroom lights added onto it. So we designed an infinitely automatic giant fungi farm using these mechanics. So up here we have the polysol piece and then you can have your fungi up here. It can either be the crimson type or the warped type, the blue one. And then on the bottom we have the nilium and that is hidden inside of this obsidian piece here. There it is right there. And instead of bone milling it manually, up at the top we have a dispenser that is full of bone meal. If you want an infinite source of bone meal, you can put like a AFK fish farm on top of this so you can get bone meal from uh, fish dying or you can put like a zero tick cactus farm for bone meal or a zero tick sugarcane farm or you can just put some type of typical farm like a melon farm or normal cactus farm in order to take those materials and compost them down. If you guys are not sure how to do that I'll link a couple of videos in the description. That way you can get an infinite source of bone meal without having to kill skeletons and then craft it down because crafting down is kind of manual. It's really cool to just automate the whole process. So that is how the giant fungi are growing. And these things can grow up to 27 blocks tall. So we had to make sure we put this system up here because these fungi blocks can actually replace any of these transparent blocks on the sides here. You can also even come up here and replace this little fungi as well. And then we are breaking off blocks from this large structure by using these TNT dupers. We got four of them positioned around the outside of the tree. So we go ahead and start this up. There's just a button over here to start it. And this is going to put a pulse around the outside. It's just a large loop of repeaters going in a circle. And it just constantly go through each of the different dupers and power them. This will make the TNT come downwards and fall onto these obsidian blocks. And they're alternated. So we got a couple low ones. So like this low one here will blow up the lower pieces of the tree and these ones here will blow up the higher pieces. There's also a delay between each of the TNT. That way there's enough time for the items to fall into the water stream before the next TNT explodes because each TNT could blow up the items from the previous one. So like that one, if you blew up items, then this TNT could blow those items up unless they get down here. There's a lot of different pieces that get broken off from the tree depending on how it grows. Most of the time it grows kind of relatively low down so these jupers can get it. Once in a while you get a really tall one which ends up growing up here. And we didn't put any TNT up here to destroy this pieces because it's a lot more rare than the smaller trees. And the reason why we have the TNT destroying stuff down so low because sometimes you get very short trees and they'll leave blocks like way down here. And if those blocks kind of sit there the items from above will land on top of it and they will never reach the storage system down below. So we kind of want to clean up the tree down below and then work our way up destroying more pieces up above. That way there's a clear area for the item from above to fall all the way down to the bottom. Now the little trees down here could be also quite destructive so we don't have really any transparent blocks down here which the tree could replace. We keep all these obsidian blocks 
and that way we don't lose any blocks so the tree won't come down here and like replace any of this down here either and the lowest that the fungi will grow is just one block above the kneeling block like this piece right here that is low as it will go it can put vines that go lower as you've seen there are some vines that are almost touching the water and if the top of the vine gets broken then all the other pieces below will also break off as items and fall to the bottom after all the pieces are destroyed they will fall down here into this waterway you can build this up in the overworld so you you could put water down here you can also build this up in the end dimension as well so the water just has some sources in the corners here just flowing everything towards the center and it's dropping down to this waterway and this is going in front of a bunch of hoppers which are just picking up all the items why do you can put in some item sorters we just have all the items going into all these chests you can see there's a wide variety of blocks you can get from this so the crimson will produce a lot of the nether warp blocks which is pretty insane you'll probably never need to craft up any more nether warp blocks and using like the nether warp items that was typically the old way of getting these type of blocks but this is definitely going to be the new way because you get so many of these unfortunately you cannot craft these down into nether warp so you mostly just start using them as an aesthetic block you also see we get the crimson stem that's the piece that is kind of in the center of the giant fungi that kind of supports the whole thing most of the time you'll just see like a one by one stem but it can be bigger than that it can get as large as a three by three worth of stem and there's all sorts of type of weird formations that can form too like it could put extra stem pieces on the side of it and the stem from these trees is probably the most interesting block because you can craft it into such a variety of different types of other blocks because this can craft down into like the plank forms the planks can be pretty much made into anything that you can use other normal planks with so you make all the fences all the doors all the gates all that kind of stuff can be made out of these stairs and slabs they're very useful so you get some of those as well they're called the stems you also from the crimson ones you get the weeping vines so this is also like a weeping vine farm which is pretty cool as they do naturally generate on those giant fungi and these giant fungi also produce the shroom lights if you guys might have seen that inside of these you can see the shroom lights will actually generate with those fungi so it's really cool you can get those as well you also can change out this farm so instead of using a crimson fungi we can come in here and use the other variation which is a warped fungi so if i switch it up we'll instead of getting the crimson variations we will now get warped ones and there was one of the bigger trees it's almost a three by three uh, stem you can kind of see how weird shaped it is yeah now we get all these variations uh, these ones produce the same type of blocks except the blue variations we got the warped stems the warped nether wart and we also get the shroom lights unfortunately we don't get any type of vines or any blue variation of the vines uh, with these guys so if we go down here you can see we get the warped to warp blocks we also get the warped stem it's more of the shroom lights and there's more of these chests that are also filling up with a lot of other items so depending on what type of color you want to kind of go with you can switch out the fungi and you can kind of see how the majority of the trees are growing down low as we switch out the color and we don't get too many blue ones going up into here and the cool thing about these fungi is they'll kind of just grow wherever they can so wherever there's room they'll just start putting in some of the leaves which are the wart blocks now up here for the TNT dupers I just used my vertical TNT duper design also put in some gates just to kind of sort of align the TNT a little bit that way it doesn't get too far off it can still move off to the edge a little bit and catch on ledges like that that's okay the majority of the TNT will make it all the way down here and land in this little kind of cup we made for it sometimes it might land on the top of this one but it really doesn't cause any problems um, as these TNT blow up they can shift their neighboring TNT by a little bit like this one might push this one off by a little bit so they shouldn't get pushed off enough to fall down here but we did put these back pieces on that way the TNT stays close enough to the edge to do a lot of damage in the center to break off all those blocks. Now, the downside to having the TNT so close to breaking up the huge fungi that grow down here is that there's a chance it could blow up the neelium block which is hidden inside of here. And that's why we had to encase it in obsidian because there's like a slim chance that no matter how low you really put it, it would try to blow it up. And if you put the neelium block down too low, then there'll be a lot of extra blocks around here which would um, have items lay on top of them so they never end up going into the storage system if you want to i guess you could make this water collection area a little bit bigger so we don't lose some of these items but they're kind of getting uh, blown off and then more trees are growing inside them and they're kind of squishing them outwards and they're flying over here 
You can also adjust how much you want the center fungi to be bone milled each time. So over here is a system that bone mills it. Essentially when this thing extends it will put these two observers together making an observer clock. This will pulse this several times, probably about five times. And the fungi don't need like a certain amount of bone mill before growing. There's just a chance every time you bone mill it. So if you want to do it like very efficiently, so you lose very little bone mill, then you can come in here and bone mill it just once each time, hoping that it does bone mill it. I would say do at least two to four times bone mill it. So if you want to do two times, you can switch this around and put it in this direction. And this should bone mill it only twice. So here it comes. It's going to power this. So bone mills that. Oh, that one looks like it's about three times. So depending on how you want it, you can uh, change that. But if you have like some kind of automatic farm that gives you a lot of bone mill, you don't have to really worry about too much bone mill. If you want to have a lot of bone mill, you can even make it uh, pulse more times. You can see that sometimes it'll grow like three trees every time it gets bone milled up there. And the trees will just kind of stack on top of each other. Out of all the items that it produces, I definitely think the stem variations are the coolest just because you can do so much with them. Like the majority of the 50 new blocks are introduced in 1.16. Different variations of what you can do with the stems make up the majority of those. The rates of this farm are pretty good as you can just see by all the outputs in these chests. It's only been running the farm about an hour. And yeah, you can see these chests are all full, these aren't full. And then as you go downwards, there's less items in these far off ones. That's a lot of items just to get in like an hour or so. Now to turn the farm off, you can just go ahead and break this redstone line. And this will cut off the redstone loop that was going around in a circle. And then if you want to restart it, you just put it back in again and press that button. Overall, the build is very simple. It just consists of a little bit of redstone up here, a couple of dupers. The majority of room is taken up by the tree if it happens to grow big. And then a little water collection system to place this for the TNT to sit on top of as well as a storage system because you definitely want to collect those items. And if you're really rich, you can uh, switch these obsidian blocks out with the new blocks. So you can either use the new block of netherite or you can use ancient debris. But it takes 36 of these blocks just to equal one of these blocks. So if you see these blocks, you know somebody is quite rich. Because if you see my other videos, you know these things are quite rare to come by. That's because it takes four of these to make one ingot and it takes nine ingots to make one of these. But both of these are resistant to TNT blasts, so you could replace these out with these type of blocks. But I think getting obsidian or just getting lava and mix it with water would be cheaper than actually getting these blocks. That's up to you guys if you want to look nice and rich, you can put those into your build. So this design is nice and cheap to build up. But I would definitely say the biggest downside to it is the stem blocks, which I find the most interesting ones, often land on these pieces in the center, which are protecting the nilium inside. So you often don't get them collected because of that. So Madrak designed a different type of farm to kind of take advantage of collecting all the stems in the center. And I'll probably show that in an upcoming video because it's pretty cool. And as always, you can find the world download to this in the description so you can build it up in your very own world. Make sure to drop this video a like as well as share it with someone else that is a Minecrafter so they can learn about the cool mechanics which are coming out in 1.16. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!